In studio with John Gilstrap, New York Times best-selling author, a.k.a. The Social Assassin. And you're back tomorrow for the Friday show as well as Mr. Height is in Charleston for his final Friday. I will be here. Yeah. Have you seen Craig's billboard on Route 11? It is North huge. or South? Huge. Uh, heading North. No, actually, it's, it's huge. I haven't been on 11 North in a while. I would have been the other day when we went to lunch. Oh, it's, it's past that. Uh, well, I wouldn't. Yeah, I would, I would always pick up eighty one that, that exit there. What are you What are you doing on eleven North all the way up into Maryland? There's a gun store <laughs> up there. On <laughs> your far works? Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's uh, time to make, bring in Mr. Doyle via telephone. John, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Uh, Matt Harvey not here today. No Harvey, he's busy. No Harvey. Okay, he's got a real here. job. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, John, yeah. is this your final Friday in the Capitol? Uh, Thursday. I'm sorry, is this your final Thursday in the Capitol? Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, very good. I'll get the day of the week right, maybe by next week. So, uh, John, from your list of things that you were supposed to be lobbying for, what would you consider to be the one item that you would say you were the most successful at uh, influencing? None. That's a tough Just week. About everything that uh, my clients wa- wanted to pass is dead. Never paid it. Never made it past crossover day. So then, what would be some things that you would call a success out of the work you did this this uh, sixty days? Well, session? we have. Uh, it's not over yet. There are some things we're fighting uh, that that I think we have a chance to defeat. Uh, so uh, I'll uh, I'll know. Uh, I probably you, 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 many times you don't even know about everything uh, at midnight Saturday night. Mm-hmm. You, you got to wait till Sunday or even Monday to find out that, you know what finally got through, and in what form. Um, there are a number of things that we're trying to uh, that we recognize that the things that we don't like we recognize are going to pass, and we're trying to affect the form uh, in which they pass. And I'll give you one example. There's a mm-hmm. bill on second reading today in the House. Senate Bill 352, which we've talked about it before, it it tightens even further the restrictions uh, on the exceptions to to abortion. People who the, uh, who've who've been uh, the victim of rape or incest, uh, it it sets up another series of hoops that they have to that they have to jump through. One of which is, and this is one that we really hope that we we can can get out of there. It requires that they explore the possibility of uh, of of what's called uh, uh, abortion reversal, uh, and this is for the chemical abortion. Uh, it's my understanding that for a chemical abortion, you take two pills, you take one, and then a few days later, you take another one. Uh, and there are people who say that after the first one, they've developed another two pills that can reverse the first one. But this is this is untested, uh, and uh, th- th- there have been uh, some examples of people who've uh, uh, ha- had serious health problems uh, trying that. So, what we're hoping is, if this bill passes, that that provision will be eliminated from it. So, there's an example of uh, of, of the kinds of things that that I've been reduced to doing since crossover day. Reduced to doing? Yeah. In other words. Totally playing defense. Right. I got you. John, how do you assess this 60-day session from your perspective as a former legislator and as a candidate for state senate? Um, it's, this has been one of the weirdest sessions in my memory. And incidentally, we're now down. This is always a factor. What I'm about to tell you is always a factor, but sometimes it's more intense than others. Uh, and that is, in the last week, the House and Senate tend to get mad at each other over process. And this is one of the more intense times. Uh, we, we're now seeing, and I'll give you a couple of examples of it, of uh, uh, one House taking a bill sent by the other House, striking the entire contents and replacing it with the contents of not only a similar bill, but an entirely different topic. Uh, ones where, you know, a, a, a logical person might, might question the germaneness of it. Uh, one, the, the House took a bill that uh, uh, it, it's uh, uh, a 
health care bill and put in it the uh, the, the contents of uh, uh, of the uh, uh, of the uh, women's bill of rights, and then the Senate last night took a bill uh, that was about child care, removed the entire contents, and put in a bill banning euthanasia. And so it's just a, there are several other examples of stuff like that. So it's uh, uh, in addition to focusing on policy. All of us lobbyists, on on whatever side you're on, have to be aware of stuff like this. Mr. Gilstrap, to whom does this make sense? I mean, what is is the point to anger the other side or just to kill the bill? Or what's the point of of that well, process the, I, you just described? Well, mostly the point is to anger the other side. And what's the point? In, what's the upside the bill, of angering the other the, side? Ended up with as the Women's Bill of Rights. Uh, it, uh, I, I was in the Judiciary Committee when they were debating it, and many of the arguments were boiled down to how dare uh, it, it was a bill that they had sent over, and, and it was, the wor- rumor was the Senate wasn't going to take it up, the Women's Bill of Rights. Much of the debate was how dare the Senate not take up our bill. And I'm thinking, hey, man, that's what we have a bicameral legislature for. When I was in, there were many times I got a bill out of the House Never saw the light of day in the Senate committee. I didn't like it, but I accepted it as part of the of the process. If we could go back and redesign the Constitution, I mean, just sort of a theoretical exercise here. State or U.S.? Uh, state Constitution. Is, is the two-month um, legislative session too short, too long, about right? Uh, I think it's too short. Uh, we're sp- there's supposed to be a deliberative body. And there's not a whole lot of deliberation. There's always the pressure. We got to hurry up and get this done. John, they passed a budget just under five billion dollars this year. They fully expect to go back in May during the interims and take uh, take care of the back end of the budget items. Obviously, they were thrown for a loop this last week or so by this near half billion dollar federal clawback. What do you know about this situation, John, and how much danger is the state in in terms of actually having to pay those dollars back? Well, we won't have to pay the dollars back if an extra $465 million is put into some form of public education. Uh, it could be K-12, higher education, you name it. And, and they've already taken care of some of the money. One, the $150 million that they put into um, – the school building authority that will count. Uh, I think the pay raises for teachers and, 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 and school service workers and for higher education employees, I think all that will count, but uh, it isn't just the back of the budget. That's going to change when they come back in in May. I think they're going to redo uh, a number of things in the front of the budget and which they are is yet to be determined. So um, I, I, what they passed is really a shell budget. It's a, it's a placeholder. Have they done anything for the foster care situation in this session? Last year, the whole DHHR reorganization restructuring uh, occupied a lot of the air in the room, but I've not heard anything out of that uh, department this legislative term, John. Have you? Well, remember, the, 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 that department doesn't exist anymore. There are three departments, and right. it's the Department of Human Services that, that, is, that is in charge of that. And, and you're right, uh, the, the three new cabinet secretaries are pretty much getting their feet wet. Uh, the, the, there is no answer short of additional money. Now, there are some other things that need to be done, but, I don't, but, but n- nothing that can be done will work without additional money. And this is one of those cases where uh, the legislature is going to say, you know, we've got to put so much more into, into public education how much do we have for other things that we want to do like foster care? I think foster care should be at the top of the list. Uh, and, and I sense that a lot of members do, but, uh, the, the, um, what this is, and this is another example of absolutely no leadership from the governor's office. He, he has been remarkably quiet for the most part during this legislative session. Is he, uh, right now, afraid of saying too much because he's a candidate for U.S. Senate? But he's never participated much. 
back in the in the, the the four years that I was in that he was governor. He was he was when you really needed leadership from the executive branch. He was he was nowhere to be found. Well, that's true. Uh, I think for the most part, over the last couple of sessions, he's been the person that's been at odds with either some, the leader of the House or the leader of the Senate. Uh, we haven't seen that friction this year. I, I don't even know that he's mixed in with uh, Mr. Hanshaw or, or Senate President Blair much. Uh, that we've seen them uh, I photograph think together. Both washed their hands of him. Yeah, he is a true lame duck. Now, that is that. That's uh, exactly right. I want to go back to the teacher pay raise bill because there were yeah. some some situations uh, there where, with uh, Senate Finance Chairman Eric Tarr, uh, while everybody else seemed to be fairly certain there would be a pay raise. I don't think Senator Tarr is necessarily certain that that's going to go through, John. Well, he doesn't want it to go through. I think he's got some legitimate fiscal concerns, though, don't you think? Well, certainly, but remember, with this clawback, every dollar they put into teacher pay raises counts against what the government would claw back from, the federal government would claw back from us. Right, but that clawback is a one-time clawback, whereas raises are base building. They are, and what you would need, what I think we need to do is go ahead, put the raises in, and come back next year. Again, we all have them paid for the first year, and then during the election, uh, we can have a big debate in front of the public of this state, people running for the legislature. How are we going to pay for this? Now, I personally think that the pay raise is too small. I supported Joe Ellington's proposal for a 10% pay raise. Uh, and uh, that didn't go anywhere in the, in the House. So, uh, and, and Deli, he's the chair of the Education Committee, really sharp person. Uh, he's, at, he's an OBGYN uh, down in uh, Mercer County. Uh, and uh, it's, it's interesting that, that uh, he, he understands public education as much as he does and i've had a number of conversations with him and uh, it's just a case of sometime you're going to have to bite the bullet we have got to be able to keep our good teachers in west virginia and and the current pay scale doesn't do that <clears throat> hey john i want to go back to the foster care system is there one person in charge of the foster care system in west virginia yeah, it's it's a section in in the uh, uh, Department of uh, uh, of Health and Human Services that 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 runs the foster care system, and it's it's a, and they're overwhelmed. You, we have the highest percentage of kids in foster care of any state in the union. And I understand that, but and I'm relatively new to this to this issue, but. I haven't heard. I, I hear the the legislature talking a lot about, and on this show, re representatives talking a lot about the foster care system, but I don't remember hearing anybody from the administration talking about this is the th I'm in charge of this, and this is what I need in order to make this system work. Is there someone uh, that doing is that? Correct, yeah, John Gilshot. That is correct. You don't hear that, and you won't, because in this administration. You can't get an answer from anybody. You ask a department head or a division chief, and immediately, uh, or, or, or you ask the uh, communications director or whoever answers the phone, and immediately your question is referred directly to the governor's office. And the governor's people insist on whether, they make the decision whether or not you're going to get your question answered. So then if... It then that leaves a legislature trying to figure out something to do in the absence of leadership from the decision makers. So if we're going to spend money on the foster care system, where would you spend it? Well, John, you, you hit the nail on the head. We don't know because we don't have the information. I said, we, the legislature does not have the information. This is a mess. Yes, it is. But it's a quiet mess because we've not heard much about it in the legislature this year. Not in, in you're right. Individual legislators uh, have complained to high heaven about it. 
but uh, it's it's not I, it's not gone on the agenda uh, of in, of uh, uh, of either of the health committees. Mm-hmm. Do yeah. we have a network? They're worried about things like abortion is, and euthanasia. Is and, there, yeah, is there a network of facilities in the state of what I would? It, it's probably an impolitic term, but what I would call orphanages. Do we have these facilities throughout the state, or that are state funded, or are they? How does it work? No, it's my understanding, John, that, that these are all in individual private homes. Okay. Now, uh, and now I, I think there are uh, there are some of those, but again, I, and, and it is not an issue that I've been able to get a whole lot of information about. And, you know, I mean, if a legislator can't get it, you know darn well I'm not going to be able to get it. And uh, uh, there are people who understand the network of foster homes. And what I, I tell you what I'll do, uh, Rob, if, 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 if you want me to, I will find one of these people and have them on, get on your show sometime, and you can yeah. talk about this issue. 100% do that, absolutely. On a day when I'm here. Hey, uh, you mentioned the health committee, John. I want to ta- ask you a question of, about the Senate health committee's decision to put House Bill 5105 on their agenda, the one that removes vaccination requirements for students in virtual public schools and would also allow private and parochial schools to set their own standards. It does remove the provision that would have allowed parents to send in a letter setting a religious exemption to vaccination requirements. I want to ask you about the sentence then uttered by Senate Health Committee Chairman Mike Maroney, who is a doctor. This bill would not yeah. be on the agenda if it were my choice and only my choice who cited his oath to first do no harm, Maroney, if I did not say that I would not be able to sleep at night. What does Maroney mean it wasn't his choice to put this on the agenda? From what I understand, the committee chairman has the choice of what goes on the agenda. But sometimes they get orders from above. Ah, I hadn't considered that. Yeah. Was that the case in that situation? I, I agree with Senator Maroney. You realize... Uh, about uh, uh, most of the states around us have some cases of measles. West Virginia has had no measles for something like 40 years. We don't have any now, and I think it is because we're one of the few states that have an almost absolute mandate for measles vaccination. That's just one example, I think, of why the bill that came out of his committee is a seriously bad bill. Uh, members of our some members of our Facebook community call this the "Make Measles Great Again" bill. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to use that <laughs> in, in our in our commenting community. And, and, make now, measles Rob, great again. Rob yes. I will I will use it with attribution if you wish, or without attribution if you wish. Uh, you please, by all means, give our Facebook commenting crew credit for what you will. <laughs> yeah. Uh, John, I've got a minute left. Is there anything else you'd like to bring to the attention of our audience from what you observed these last 60 days? No, I, I should always be prepared when you ask me that question, and I never am. If, they, if I were on there as a candidate, I'd have something ready. But, but as a lobbyist, it's just all i got to say is there are so many different bills and so many different bill numbers rolling around in my head. I, I, I don't always remember if somebody gives me a number which particular topic it's about. So, yeah. Yeah. Nope, Sorry. No problem. You are unopposed in your Senate primary, correct? That is correct. Yeah, so you don't have to sharpen your elbows for another several months. <laughs> in fact, uh, I'm, I'm going to lay low till that Republican primary is over. Yeah, that's probably not a bad decision. John, thanks so much. I appreciated <laughs> your reporting. If you don't mind, I'd like to have you come in next Thursday and just do a little recap of everything once the whole session concludes. Uh, we could do that, sure. Yeah, same time if that's okay with you. I'll be in touch. Okay, thanks. Thank you, you, John.